And Senator Lou is joining me now. So great to have you here for Picks on Politics, yeah, your first appearance. Me, okay, let's talk about this. Budget deadline extended again, originally due April 1st. I kind of feel like we go through this every time there's a budget where you get these extensions. What's taking so long? Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not unusual. The We're in the throes of heated budget negotiations on a number of issues. You mentioned housing, mm -hmm. schools, education, health care is a big issue as well. Yeah. And so we're going to get it right. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, uh, there is no disruption to state government operations whatsoever, mm -hmm. and that's because we pass extenders. We don't want to pass extenders for too long because right. we want to keep the focus on getting the budget done as soon as possible. Yeah. But there's no disruption to state government. So let's talk about some of the things right here. What was taken out of the budget was mayoral control of schools, right? I spoke to Mayor Eric Adams about this. He is obviously fighting vigorously to keep control of the schools, and he says Albany's being Albany right now. What is your take right now? You're the chair of the education <laughs> uh, department here. So what would you say about mayoral control of schools? Do you think it's warranted? Yeah, well, first of all, it seems like city halls mean city hall. Hmm. So uh, I think the issue of mayoral control and how we govern schools in New York City public, in New York, pu New York City public schools is, is a big issue. And it's, a, and it's an issue large enough for us to really focus on once we've enacted the budget. There's no fiscal impact on school governance or mayoral control, nor does that have any impact on the state budget itself in terms of revenues and expenditures. So as soon as we enact the budget, we're going to turn our full attention to the issue of school governance and mayoral control in view of this big report that the state education department has just released. All right, so you're saying it's an issue, right? The mayor is saying, well, look, I have a bunch of wins. Reading efficiency, math efficiency has gone up. Graduation rates have gone up. It is doing well. Why take it away now? Why is it a discussion right now if there are a bunch of wins? Well, this mayor can claim a few wins. There are also some failures that others would point to. Mike? Uh, well, let me say this first, that the issue of, of male control in school governance is not just about this particular mayor, who's been in charge for a little more than two years. Mm -hmm. It has been in place in New York City now for 20, coming on, on 23 years. Right. And so we've, we asked the state education department a couple of years ago to take a a very in-depth look at what mayoral control has yielded the mm -hmm. city of New York, our school kids, what has it been compared to what it was before mayoral control was enacted in 2002, and also take a look at several large school systems around the country mm -hmm. that enacted mayoral control back in the 1990s and in recent years decided it was not working for them. Mm -hmm. So we've got, and this is of course overlaid over thousands of parents and teachers and other stakeholders who are saying they need a stronger voice, which mayoral control does not afford. Is there them. something right now that he is doing that you do not like? It's it's not about him. Right. It is about school governance and how best to to run our public schools in New York City, whether this uh, for for the remainder of this particular mayor's term or any other mayor that comes in in the future. So if, it may, if you take away mayoral control, what then happens? You go back to the school board system. No, I don't think anybody envisions going back to the system prior to 2002 when mayoral control was first implemented. But there are a number of suggestions and ideas that the State Education Department has looked at in detail comparing what we have here in New York City versus other major school districts. We're talking about Chicago, we're talking about Boston, mm -hmm. we're talking about Detroit. I mean, these are, these are significant school systems, urban school systems with, very, with, with many similarities so what are they doing? to what we in charge? in New York City. Well, they, they had mayoral control, yeah. and the people there decided that it wasn't working for them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in Chicago, this fall, they are now, they are going to have their first elected school board, ele uh, their, the first mm -hmm. citywide school board elections. And, you know, I'm not saying that would necessarily yeah. work, would be the best for New York City, but this is an issue that we will truly focus on in view of the State Education Department report once we enact the state budget, All right, which like, I hope will be soon. It sounds like you're, he's not going to get it. No, I'm not saying that. I, you know, there's no pre there are, there are no predetermined conclusions okay. here. We we need to look at this the issue. And my colleagues and I in the state legislature, both in the Senate and the Assembly, we're, we're discussing the report already. Okay, let's talk about some other other issues right now in the budget. One of the sticking points, obviously, is this good cause legislation saying that it would protect tenants from being unreasonably evicted here. So, why is that such a sticking point? How do you see that playing out? Uh, you know, there's th this this legislation seeks to protect tenants mm -hmm. because there are two thirds of New York City residents are tenants, and we have seen in recent years uh, a great deal of abuse of tenants and 
warehousing of apartments being kept empty so that uh, some landlords can sell to a higher bidder in the future. And that is creating a tremendous housing shortage yeah. here in New York City, affordable or otherwise. I mean, there's a huge housing shortage. Our vacancy rate is at like one point one and a half percent. And by law, the definition of a vacancy, the, the, when you have a vacancy rate under five percent, that's already a definition of an emergency housing shortage. So we have a very dire situation. Good cause is meant to help tenants stay in their apartments. And at the same time, we're looking for incentive programs to help developers build more housing. Yeah, we need more housing, more affordable housing too, right? That is yeah, certainly yeah. We, we, want to, we want to build more housing. We want to get people to have the incentives to build more housing. Yeah. But we also have to protect tenants to, to help them stay where they are. Right. It, it doesn't do any good to build a whole bunch of housing and then have tenants kicked out. Speaking of protections, there seems to be rules right now and laws in place that would protect squatters after 30 days or so from being allowed to stay inside of a place. Do you want to change that, taking away squatters' rights in, in New York City? <laughs> you know, where, how do you see that playing out? What do you need to make it done? And do squatters really have rights after 30 well, days? Well, you know what? I, I think part of the problem is that it's misunderstood. The law is admittedly a little bit fuzzy right now. Okay. And there's, a, there's, there's been some confusion between squatters and tenants. My proposed legislation would make it very clear that squatters are not tenants. A squatter is somebody squatters, who moves in. I wouldn't even say move in. Squatters are intruders who, who just basically break into somebody else's property mm -hmm. and then use all sorts of loopholes to claim that somehow the property is theirs. After so, a certain amount of time. Well, you know what? The fact is, uh, the fact is my bill will clearly say that squatters are not tenants. Tenants, the term tenants in housing law does not include squatters, and squatters would have no rights even after 30 days or however long they've been in. So right now, so so if your bill were to pass, right, and a 30 day somebody's in there, what happens? Please come in and arrest them. If the if the if the if my bill passes, which is what passes, which I am confident at, that it will, the housing courts and the attorneys involved will have a stronger leg to stand okay. on. Now, you know, the cops showing up, they're, they're not as necessarily going to know exactly what to do and which documents are legitimate mm -hmm. and which documents are not. Yeah. But right now, the law is so fuzzy that uh, even when you get to court and even when the attorneys are involved, the attorneys for the owner, the legitimate owner, sometimes there's an attorney for the fake landlord, the yeah. squatter, uh, the law will make it much clearer. Okay. We're out of time here, but we got plenty That's more to it? talk to. I know. It's <laughs> quick, right? The minutes fly by. We're going to have you back. Thank Senate you. Senator John Liu, appreciate your time. Good luck with the budget. Keep us posted, okay?